hi this is Anne from the useless crafter all right so I'm doing another off the mat this is Pascal from Tangled and um, I thought this was a cool file because one it's so cute um, two it's a design space so what you would do is you would go into images and let's search for Pascal the way I found it was I typed in Disney but Oh, here he is. So it's $1.99. If you have Cricut Access, it's actually a dollar. But if you don't have it um, and you don't make it, you can still do this tutorial with me. So you don't pay for anything until you actually go to the Make It screen. And you can even go to the Make It screen and just not continue. Um, so this is a great way to learn because we're using the same file and you can kind of use it in the same place and really get to learn design space. So all right, what you would do is you would select it and then insert images. So here is my little guide. Now, what I think is kind of cool or different, not cool, maybe just different, <laughs> is um, I always look over in the right-hand side panel to see what I'm dealing with, right? So in this case, I know we've got, you know, like yellow for his eyes, here's the white. So there's a couple colors, but what's interesting is there's a draw feature on here. Now, I don't really want to draw on anything because I'm probably going to use either glitter cardstock or um, some kind of shimmery kind of thing, you know, because I feel like with the greens, it's so pretty. Um, so I'm not going to want to draw. So I'm kind of curious. Let's see. So it's drawing the eyes on the green. I'm almost wondering if I can change the draw to cut and then I'm gonna slice it out because that gives us the slits right so I'm gonna grab this um, this thing is highlighted already I'm gonna hit the shift key and click on the green oh it doesn't let me slice I thought maybe I could slice it but you know what let's detach it for a second hold on so let's go and it um, click here where it says attach and Okay, let's ungroup. See if that does anything. Oh, it's cut and print. Why would it be cut and print? Okay, so let's change this to, I don't know what to do. Let's see. <laughs> um, print type, I don't wanna print but it doesn't give me any other options. Um, and I wonder what it looks like. Let's hide it and see what it looks like. So there he is. And there that is. I mean, I guess we don't need it. It just feels kind of weird. So it's cut and print. Oh, it's, oh wait, hold on. Oh no, I can't flatten it. So it was always a cut and print item, which is so weird to me. So are you telling me, hold on, let's try to grab this out. Ah, I can't even grab it. It won't, okay, why won't you let me detach? Oh, there, detach, jeez, okay. Maybe it was a user error. <laughs> okay, here's cut and print. Let's see if I can change it, no. Okay, it doesn't let me do anything, but I would just delete it. Okay, so let's put him back because we didn't size him at all, but he's so cute. Um, he's got really pretty colors. I've done him before and I love using different greens. So in this case, he's got two, right? So I like the idea of using like one is a glitter cardstock and the other either just a super lighter color or even do regular cardstock or shimmer cardstock you just want a balance of the two to play off on each other and it's so pretty um, at the one that I did for my cake topper I used one was glitter cardstock and the other one was the shimmer paper and if you're not familiar with the shimmer paper it looks like glitter but it's smooth so it's just a different texture and it gives you a different color so it's really really pretty 
All right, so let's look at this little guy. First of all, we know that he's one of the smaller characters, so we don't need to make him so big if he is a supporting character. So for instance, in this case, if you do uh, Rapunzel really big, then you can't make him the same size as Rapunzel because it would look really weird, right? It would need to be proportionate. So I would probably do him something about maybe 20 inches or so. But let's look at our little pieces. So darn, because this body part, it's connected to the legs and connected to the tail. So it's all one big green piece. I almost feel like maybe we should do him at maybe like 18 inches. So let's do the width at 18 inches. And let's see what we can do. Okay, so let's zoom out so we don't need to scroll so much. He's still pretty big at 50%. Okay, so 18 inches. Let's see what our pieces look like. So let's go and contour that and see what we have. So for his main body, yeah, see, this is a big piece right here. Okay, so let's hide all and see what we have. So this is the the body. It's nine by 11. Okay, so actually we still have some room. Let's go to contour for a second and let's see how big his face is and not his body. So we're kind of selecting and deselecting and that's what's cool about contouring is you could easily hide things or um, you know remove something. So okay, so his face is 8.5 by 11. So we still, you know what, we can make him a little bit bigger. So let's go to contour, click hide all, cause then you have the option of showing all. So it goes back to the original image. Um, let's, so he is 18 inches. Let's do him at 20. I think we can do it seamless at 20. Um, and he's gonna look really, really cute. So, at 20, this is what I would want to do is, let's see, I would probably want to slice him like right around here, right down this center piece, because the seams in the black, all we're going to see is maybe, let's see, oh, we need to slice this way and this way. Yeah, if we sliced it kind of like right down here, this big green piece is gonna cover the seams. The only seam we would see is maybe a little bit right here and a little bit right here and maybe some of his feet, but, um, or it would be cool to slice off his head, but I don't know if we have enough, if we could slice something like right here it would be okay I think the black I mean it is what it is the black background but he's gonna look amazing because all the green is gonna be seamless and it's gonna kind of cover everything so all right so we are doing him at 20 inches wide so let me save this Pascal 20 inches wide it's gonna be really, really cute. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start working on this guy. Um, so do I have it ungrouped? Okay, I do have it ungrouped. So let's start moving pieces out. Okay, so here is this. So this is one, two, three, four pieces, right? So we're gonna use contour to do this. So when we use contour and we wanna separate it out into four pieces, then we need four copies total of the image. So here's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so the first image, go to contour, and let's just hide all. So it's gonna give us this body, right? But we want this little slit right here. So we want to select it so that it's included so that we don't see that. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. So here is our body. And it is um, 11 inches by 12.158. So it's a little long, but let me show you. We're going to rotate this body a little bit. 
And now rotate it a little bit more. Um, can we rotate it anymore and change it? Shoot. Oh, I'm trying to get it so it's 12 inches and I'll cut exactly 12 inches. And I don't know if I can, oh, I'm missing it. Um, it might cut off the feet a little bit, but it's okay. We're not gonna notice it. I'm gonna show you later on the Make It screen. Let's go to the next piece, hit Contour. As long as one side is 11 and a half or under, we can kind of trick the system and we have a little bit more leeway. So we're gonna do that. Let's hide all. We want this foot and we don't want the body. So here's this teeny tiny foot. How cute is that? Let's go on the next one, contour. We wanna hide all. We want this foot and we don't want the body. So you can see you can contour from both the panel, I'll show you what I'm talking about, both like from selecting in the middle or over here in the panel. So we wanna hide all, we want the face, we want the eyebrow and the face, we don't want the body. Okay, and here's our face. Um, he's so cute. All right, let's go over here and see what else we have. So. Oops, well, hold on, sorry. The face is 9.4 by 12.147. So let's rotate this and see if we can make it. Okay, so once rotating it, this now can cut on the Cricut. It's 9.7 by 11.3. So you can see you don't always have to slice. You can rotate your image a little bit to see if it works and if we can trick the system. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the Make It screen though, so don't worry. All right, let's go over here. Here are our little green pieces. You can keep it like this or you can slice it out so that you can make them closer so you don't have all this wasted space here. So I usually do that and because he's just a few pieces, I'm going to show you how to slice it out. And the reason is because I use a lot of glitter cardstock and I save my scraps. So I want to make these really close to each other so I have a lot more scrap, usable scrap to use for my next project. So what you wanna do is when you're slicing, so you can slice or contour, because I showed you how to do contour with the other one. The reason why you use contour um, versus slicing, the main reason is that if you remember, when you have your pieces so close to each other, it's really hard to slice it out because to slice this piece out, my shape needs to cover it completely and only that piece. So you see this piece is completely covered, these two pieces are not. So I'm gonna grab these two and I'm gonna slice. Now this one was okay to do and you'll see in a second. Okay, so let's move that out. We don't need this, um, the slice results, but let, now this piece is by itself. So that means when I go to the Make It page, I can put it really close to this and I don't have as much wasted space when I'm, when I'm cutting it. And then if I slice this one out, so let's move the paper over. And what you don't want is something like this because this is not covered in here, it's gonna slice funky. You wanna make sure that whatever piece you have is completely covered by your shape and only that piece, right? So now I'm gonna take these two items and I'm gonna slice. Now with contouring, the reason why we didn't contour for the, for the big green portion of his body and face is because I wouldn't have been able to get a shape to completely cover just his face. So when you have funky, um, shapes or when they're really really close to each other it's hard to isolate it so when you have that issue you're gonna want to use contour to remove the pieces so you can see now I can make this super efficient right or I could even do something like this later when we go to the cut the cut screen but you can see I can make this much more efficient and then I'll have a lot more of my cardstock left Okay, so let's, we can still keep this here for now because we still have other things to slice, like this. So I'm gonna slice out the eyes. Oh, what just happened? I somehow scrolled all the way over. Okay, so here are my eyes, or a piece of it. I'm gonna grab the two items and I'm gonna slice. 
So, jeez. Oh, okay, so that piece is by itself. And see all of these pieces? What is this? Oh man, design space is acting up again. Okay. All right, we can get rid of the slice results. Okay, there it is. Um, so now this is here and we can make them closer. Let's look at the white. Same thing with the white, we're gonna wanna do it. So here is a clean piece, right? So I'm gonna put it in here. I wanna make sure nothing comes out here. So it's completely enclosed in this gray space. So I'm good. Grab the two items and slice. And I think that should pretty much be done with all our colored pieces. So here's the white, here's this white, and then these two pieces. So we're done with the colored pieces, right? So I'm going to remove this. We don't need the slice results. Um, all right, so what you wanna do now is let's look at his body. So his body is long. It's 20 inches by 16 by 17. So we're gonna have to slice them up in a couple of places. So let's, um, let's bring in a square and I'm using 12 by 12 cardstock, which means we can cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half. But I don't like dealing with half inches, so I'm gonna make my cardstock 11 by 11. So I'm gonna go to size and change it to 11 and hit tab. So here's my 11 by 11 cardstock. I'm going to go to my position feature and round to the nearest whole number. So 4.9 becomes five, 1.083 becomes one. So basically what we're telling design space is go over five units and go down one whole unit and that's where the beginning of our square is. So five, the X is the one running across, Y axis is the one running up and down, okay? Now duplicate your square and we're gonna put this one really, really close. Because what happens is we want these two flushed, right? We don't want any gaps and we don't want any overlays. We want it perfectly butted up next to each other so that when we piece him back together, we just push it up together, tape it, and then we have him back as a whole, you know, black background, right? So again, what you wanna do is you wanna go and round to the nearest whole number. So 16.1 becomes 16. It's already at one, and I can show you the math. So here, it starts at five. My cardstock is 11 inches, so five plus 11 is 16, and there's 16. So hit the shift key, grab both squares, and then duplicate because these two are already flushed with each other. We are going to now take this set and make it flushed with the top set. So if you put it close, again, you can round to the nearest whole number. So 5.028 becomes five, 12.13 becomes 12, and now you have four completely flushed squares. Now what you wanna do is scroll down to get our black background. Here it is, so select it over here and then go to arrange and send to the front. We wanna see where we're slicing him, right? So now we can bring him in again. Oops, not upload images. Cause we can see exactly where to slice him, right? So let's bring him in for a second. Okay, it was this guy, right? So we'll insert him. And this is another reason why I like to make them round whole numbers <laughs> because now I can make him 20 inches and I could um, duplicate him, right? Exactly. So let's look to see where we're slicing him. So in this case, we're going to have a slice come right down here. So I'm probably not going to want this. I'm going to want to move it over because look at my seam. It's longer than it needs to be, right? So if I moved him over, so first of all, sorry, let's grab him and hit the shift key and grab him and align. We're going to align center because we want them to move together and I'm going to group it for now. So when I move, oh shoot, where is my little guy? Um... You know what, I am going to flatten that one. And let's see if it brings him to the front. It does not. Um, let's undo it for a second, sorry. I was trying to make this good, but 
wasn't working. So I'm going to ungroup it. All right, let's bring that one to the front. Arrange, send to the front. Let's see where he needs to be, okay? So he, we see if we move it over here, the difference is now the seam up here is minuscule, right? It's just this little piece as opposed to running straight down here and a little bit right here. So if I move him over here, I have a seam right here and then it runs down, everything's covered. I could even move him over let me see, let's move this guy out of the way for a second. Let's see what we have exactly. So here he is. Um, hmm. We could, okay, let's cut him right here. So he goes down here. There's a little bit of a seam here. It runs down, oh no, it runs down right there. I don't want that. Maybe, okay, so his foot, the green is gonna cover it. I mean, we could twist him. Let's see if we twisted him, if it would be better. Just see, I'm being really, really particular right now, which I don't need to be. So let's turn him back. Let's just get him. So we want him. Right around here. So the seam is going to go up his foot through his body. It's going to be covered for the most part. You might not even see. Yeah, the seam is going to be minimal. Going across, we have a little bit at the eye, but all of this, let's see, let's move this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or maybe move it down here. Oh, maybe right here. So we have a seam through his eyes, but this white is covered. Going through his body. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so let's move him back. Let's arrange, send to the front, and we'll just put him right over this guy so we know exactly where to cut him, right? Oh, hold on, he's sticking down below right there. Hold on, let's move him up a little bit. So this is running through. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so let's put him on and we need to rotate him a little bit to make him fit exactly. Okay, so now we can go grab this one and just delete this guy. So here's our guy. We're gonna slice him up into four pieces, okay? So here's our first square, our image, slice. Down here, grab this, slice. And over here, slice. So let's look at our pieces. We've got we've got big pieces, right? Um, and this can all be cut on the Cricut, wonderful. And then we've got this piece. So we've got four nice big pieces. Let's delete all of our slice results. And here, his, here are his four pieces. Let's save it. Uh, save. And hopefully it doesn't disappear on me. Okay, perfect. Let's go to make it so I can show you how to move pieces around and make it really efficient. And we still aren't paying yet. Just click okay to this warning. You don't pay until you click checkout. Um, all right, so here's this piece and it's much closer, right? So next time we have a lot of cardstock left to use with our scraps. Okay, let's look at this. This piece, so our black background is three pieces. All good there. Here is our yellow, the eyes. Okay, this piece is really big, so let's move this down. Um, I do have a 12 by 24 mat. I prefer to use it because um, it's the cheapest mat to buy in bulk. So each 12 by 12 comes out to be about 225 as opposed to like $10 a mat. So that's why I always use it. If you don't have it though, it's okay. What you wanna do is we wanna rotate this 
so that it's as close to 12 as possible. So we're really close right here, right? Let's see if we can. Okay, so we do want, we're gonna, we're gonna lose a little bit of him, but just a little bit. Okay. And what I mean is what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a 12 by, well, actually in this case, you need a 12 by 24 mat. You're gonna put your green paper a little bit past the 12 because it never, it gives you a quarter of an inch here. So if you put it down 12.25 running down here, this will cut perfectly on your paper because there's no point in putting it right up to zero, zero because nothing gets cut up here. So that's kind of the trick. This might cut off a little bit of just a tiny bit, but it won't impact your, your image at all. All right, so you have that. If you don't have a 12 by 24 mat, I would just stick it on a 12 by 12 mat move put your paper below the 12 line right at 12 and a quarter and that's where i would put it then that means you can't have this here right so you're going to click on this click on the three dots move object we're going to move it to another sheet because you don't have a 12 by 24 map no big deal you're going to put it on this one confirm so we're moving the foot now we still have one more foot click on the three dots move object move it to the face did I mess up? Okay, sorry. Cancel. I'm on the wrong wrong page. I want to be on this page. Move this foot. Click on the three dots. Move object. We're going to move it to here. So now your one green, this is going past the 12 line a little bit, but it's it might cut perfectly. It might just cut off like a little bit that no one will notice. So I wouldn't worry about that. All right, let's look at the face. Same thing with the face. We want to rotate the face a little bit. So let's see how much we can get this in here. So see, when I rotate the face, this now is under 11 inches, so it can cut perfectly. Um, I'm going to move the feet up here, so I'm going to use just a 12 by 12 mat and cardstock. I'm going to stick it here, and I'm going to stick it here, and then you can even save this piece for another time. I mean, you never know. All right, <laughs> so that's that piece. Look at this. If you remember, we we separated these pieces so that we can make this really efficient, right? Because I think before it was something like this. And we don't want that. So we can move it here, move this here. And now you have a lot of scrap, usable scrap for next time. Let's look at this. You can always move this. If you have a thin piece going across, just move this. You can rotate it. Here's our other piece, same thing with this. You can make it like this. And that's it. He's gonna be adorable. I would use, like I said, green glitter cardstock for sure. And the black, I would just use regular black. All the other colors, I would do a mix of glitter and regular cardstock if you don't wanna use glitter. Um, that's fine too, he's gonna look really cute. <laughs> okay, let me know what you think, comments, questions. Um, and if you have a special request, let me know as well. All right. Thanks guys.